Welcome to my lecture online. Now here is an interesting question. How long does it take to fly to the sun? Well, we know that the light coming from the sun takes a little bit more than eight minutes to reach the earth and be that it's 93 million miles or about 150 million kilometers, 8.3 minutes is about 500 seconds. And so you'd say that if you could travel at the speed of light, it would take you a little over eight minutes, about 500 seconds to reach the sun. But then again, something changes when you start traveling really fast. One thing that changes is that the time begins to shrink. The passage of time slows down. Secondly, the distance to the object that you're trying to approach, that you're trying to reach, also shrinks at the same time. And it turns out that the time change and the distance change is in the exact same way. As time shrinks, so does distance in the exact same proportion so that you can then see that why it would take you less time to get there because the distance shrinks. So let's take a look at some numbers here. So let's say that we're traveling at 0.99 C. The Lorentz factor is therefore 7, which means that the distance, according to observer B here, only appears to be 13 million miles instead of 93 million miles. And it turns out that with the change in time, the time, instead of 500 seconds, moving at that speed of 0.99c, that time would only last 71 seconds. So it turns out that yes indeed, if you were to travel at nearly the speed of light for 71 seconds, you would travel a distance of 13 million miles. If you then speed up to 0.995c, the Lorentz factor now becomes 10. The distance, according to observer B, to the sun would now shrink to only 9.3 million instead of 93 million, one-tenth as much. And the time that it would take for observer B to get there, according to their own clocks, would only be 50 seconds, one-tenth the time. So one of the ways you can look at it is, since time shrinks, since, or since distance shrinks, it only takes less time to get there. And that's exactly what would happen, again, to observer B. Now, to observer A, the, the distance to the sun would still be 93 million miles, and the time for the spaceship to reach the sun would still be the original about 500 seconds. But that's according to observer A, not according to observer B. Then if we speed up to 99.99% of the speed of light, the Lorentz factor now becomes 70.7, .7. the distance to the sun now only appears 1.3 million miles, and you would get there in 7 seconds at nearly the speed of light. Speed up even more to 0.999999c. The Lorentz factor now would be 707. The distance now would be a mere 130,000 130, 130, miles, which is less than the distance to the moon. And at that speed, you would get there in less than a second. Now, what would happen if you could actually speed up all the way to the speed of light? Well, then the Lorentz factor would become infinity. The distance to the sun would appear to shrink down to zero and therefore the time it would take you to get to the sun would be zero seconds. Time would simply stop moving forward and distance would shrink down to zero. The entire universe would only have zero size from one end to the other end of the universe if you were to move through the universe at the speed of light. And so you can see that it's all relative. How long does it take you to fly to the sun? It depends. It depends on your speed relative to the speed of light.